Hello, I'm Malta, and uh, I have a business in England, I have a business in Malta, and this um, business is paintings on the whole. How do you value your paintings? Uh, if you're selling your paintings, you want to sell them at the top dollar. If you sell them to a dealer, the dealer will want a margin, will need a margin. If you have an auction house to sell your pictures, they will want to make sure it sells so they haven't wasted their time in cataloguing. And the people buying in an auction over dealers who will want a margin, maybe collectors who don't want to give, give the dealers a margin. So when you come to value your pictures, it's a cause of, of aggravation. If you have a deceased estate, uh, the siblings will argue about who has which picture, who, how the money is split if it's sold. So it's, it's, inter it's a very interesting part of the market and it drives the market, of course, because it's, it's a business, it's an industry. The artists are, are making money. The painters who made, made these things were not doing it for fun. They were doing it to be paid, and even the ones in churches, on the whole, the church was paying the artists. If you have a car dealer, they have a book, a guidebook, with the dates and types of specifications of cars, and it's quite easy for them to use the book, and they'll know whether they're being light on the price or heavy on the price. And it's the same really with pictures to a great degree. You have the internet now, you have uh, prices that have been realised for similar pictures, you have the predictive prices and catalogues. You can look and subscribe to services which give you the values of achieved prices. You can go to sales and watch the stuff sell. You can detect the things that do sell and you can detect the things that don't sell. Many of the things that don't sell will be re-offered again at a lower price later on, possibly somewhere else. And you can piece together the market. So you have the internet, you have the sales, you have the shops, you have what has sold, you have what is available. You can look at stuff abroad, and there is a variation in prices for different things in different places. And if, if you think of a, a, a picture as a car, or as a fitted kitchen, or, or as a piece of furnishing, you, you can soon get a feel for it. Uh, people will, will spend um, 5,000 pounds, 5,000 euros on a, on a fitted kitchen which will be worthless in five or ten years. Yet if you buy a painting, it's not going to go down in value if you have not overpaid for it. Uh, it, it is movable, it is likely to appreciate, and of course you get the benefit from owning it. So you have to really follow your own judgment and you have to make your own mind up. Um, if you're new to the market, it's desperately difficult. You of course have the furnishings pictures which are cheaper and usable. You have the antique paintings where there are different dimensions to the value. You have the very important old master pictures, famous pictures like the Warhols and the Bankses, and that's a different type of valuation. Um, so you have, you've got to be aware that, that there are some things which are very expensive and have valuations for different reasons. One of the, the reasons the very expensive paintings are so expensive is because in America you, have t you can get tax relief by giving your pictures to a, an institution and if you buy a painting, you go through a process of grooming the painting, where the painting has a value when you, when you bought it, where, where the, the person wishing to offset tax buys the picture, and then it goes through a period of grooming. So this picture, if I want to save my tax in America, I buy it for four thousand four, four pounds, or it would be four million pounds, or four hundred thousand pounds, and I keep it for five years. And in that five year period, you groom the picture, you send it to exhibitions, you loan it to institutions. Often you'll loan it to the institution that will in the end have it. And the process of grooming it means that because it's been shown, because it's been exhibited, it, it has a high value. And then you have a panel of valuers which will know the institution and they will give it a higher value than what you paid for it. And then you use the painting to offset your taxes by giving it to that institution. So you have all this stuff which affects the prices of the very expensive stuff. You have pictures like Salvador Mundi, the Leonardo, which went to the Middle East. Um, that was a, a case of the, the, a Middle Eastern uh, government and, and uh, society trying to buy into the Christian art to set up a, a museum. And, and, and that purchase was, was a trophy purchase where they wanted to have a notable painting like in the Louvre you have the Leonardo da Vinci. Mona Lisa, so, that, so, so you have one-upmanship and you have this, 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 this competitiveness for institutions to have the best stuff. Um, the, the downside with institutions is they're hoarding pictures and 
these pictures were not meant to go into galleries in museums. They were meant to go into houses and homes and presbyteries, religious buildings. And these museums own this stuff and they hoard it and they don't always show everything they own. And that's, that's a shame in some, some respects. So back to the real world, we have these paintings in circulation. Value them um, like you would value anything else. How desirable, how desirable are they? How much do you want to have it? Um, what it, will it be worth if you wanted to take an exit route? Do you need to have any work done on it? I don't buy any pictures that need restoration. Uh, it's too expensive um, on the whole, and um, other than minor things. And uh, look, at, look at the pictures. How, how much do you want to have it? If, if you're buying a car, as I say, or you're buying a fitted kitchen, you, you would know that you would know you would know the value. If you're buying a cruise on a, on a, on a nice cruise around the Mediterranean, you, you know you know what a cruise is worth. You know what a hotel room is worth, and it's, you have to go on that sort of thing. You have to go with your gut feeling, and and as I say, use your six senses, piece piece together the market, ask for opinions from different people. I mean, if you're in a sale room, you can go up to a complete stranger and ask them their opinion. They won't mind telling you. If you're in an auction house, you can go up to the auctioneer and ask an auctioneer. You can say, what do you really think about this picture? And they'll tell you. And they'll be, they'll be glad you've asked them because um, it gives them a chance to have a chat and a natter. And, and it gives them some pride because they're being asked their opinion. So I hope that's been helpful because the market is stigmatised. The valuation of pictures is stigmatised and it's a black art and it's secretive and you'd never get any reasons for the valuations, you're just given a value. And uh, I think that if you're entering the market and you want to start a collection, if you can get, get to grips with these valuations, it becomes really pleasurable. Thank you very much.